Breaking news tonight, Attorney General William Barr meeting with House Republicans to talk about a plan to reauthorize provisions of the FISA program set to expire at the end of the week. Fox News being told that both sides tonight appear close to a deal. Republicans saying there are several items being pushed uh, in any reauthorization package. And by the way, the president has said he does not want reauthorization without reform first of the FISA legislation uh, and operations. They include uh, making the Department of Justice show their work in order to justify any FISA investigation. Penalties for any who politically abuse the FISA process and the production of a transcript of a secret FISA court proceeding, any and all of them. We will uh, be watching this and taking it up uh, tonight with Tom Fitton. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. The question is straightforward. Should FISA absolutely be reformed before any reauthorization is considered? Please cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. And joining us tonight is Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch, and he is, as always, watching this closely as he does almost everything that takes place uh, in the swamp. Uh, this has a this has a certain smell to it, Tom. To me, at least. Your thoughts? Well, Congress is being asked to reform FISA, and we still don't know the scope of the criminality behind those who abuse the process to target Carter Page, Donald Trump, and who Lord and Lord knows who else. Uh, no. It's just incredible to me. Uh, look, the, the requirement of transcripts for FISA hearings, you know, we asked for the transcripts of the FISA hearings for the four Warren applications targeting the, mm -hmm. the candidate for president and then president of the United States. The court didn't bother to hold hearings. Uh, this is a scam that we're being sold here that we need FISA to protect our national security. The president has inherent authority to conduct surveillance related to foreign, uh, foreign intelligence operations. He doesn't need FISA. What we do need is to put people in jail who violated the law and to make promises to put people in the future in jail who might violate the law in the future. It's just absurd. Absurd and, uh, and it is also disappointing. Uh, and that's the word I'll use, frustrating, uh, because Attorney General Barr, we are told repeatedly from friends, close associates, that he is the man for the job and that we can trust him. What we are in effect being asked to do in this instance, and our Republican and Democratic uh, uh, legislators in Washington, we're being asked to trust Mr. Barr to do what's right, to take care of all of those uh, breaches uh, and abuses of, uh, of trust by federal officials, namely those in the Department of Justice and the FBI and our intelligence agencies, in some cases the chiefs of those agencies, and just not worry our pretty little heads about the details. Yeah, you know, the, the concern about FISA supposedly is it's, uh, you know, the opportunities for abuse, and they're not policing the abuse that's already taking place. So this is just a lot of noise about nothing. The reform isn't going to fix it. As I said, we don't need FISA. We didn't have FISA to the left, to the left passed it to try to restrain the president back in the 70s. It's like the War Powers Act. It's a, it's a sort of an unconstitutional imposition on the president's powers. But the whole point is, what do you do if the law is broken, if there's an abuse right. of power? Nothing's being done. Well, and I'm not hearing anything for reform that's going to reassure me that, A, there's going to be accountability for what went on, or certainly if there's no accountability for what went on in the past, why do we expect it's going to change in the future? Now, it's, it's an important question to ask, particularly of Kevin McCarthy, the minority leader in the House. Uh, it is, a, of course, a particular interest to the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, who's made it very clear who her friends are in high places in the Department of Justice uh, and the FBI. Uh, the Democrats seem to have more friends than the Republicans, I'll put it that way, uh, in the permanent bureaucracy and the deep state. Uh, I don't sure. know why any Republican would accept this nonsense whatsoever. Not a single reason. Let me turn very quickly to the Hillary Clinton Judicial Watch deposition. Where do you stand with it? Uh, the time is running out. Yeah, she, the court ruled she has to be deposed uh, on the email case uh, within 75 days, and that runs on May 16th. Uh, we don't expect her to appeal it, and we hope to set a deposition date soon. What's interesting in that ruling, Lou, is the court excoriated 
this Justice Department and this State Department for trying to pretend there were, there were no more questions to ask. And on top of that, we had the Fifth Amendment also being asserted, at least indirectly, one of the lawyers for one of Hillary's Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, email vendors, he said his client's going to assert the Fifth Amendment again. So the judge says, well, we're not going to go through that. So again, the Fifth Amendment raises its ugly head here. And on top of that, Hillary Clinton, after all of this is happening over the weekend, uh, says the concerns about the emails are bogus. So uh, we have an indication of her view of uh, the court's concerns right. about what she ha did with her email system. Tom, I would like to take up so many things, including the, the Biden uh, criminal enterprise, uh, but we'll save that for another day. We're out of time. But I do want to uh, uh, quote Judge Royce Lambert's order. I think that the audience uh, would be well served to, to see this, but if we could put that up. Uh, Clinton email system was one of the gravest modern offenses to government transparency than from Judge Royce Lambert in his court order. Tom Fenton, thank you very much. You're Appreciate welcome. it, as always. You're welcome, Lou.